Yo, what's up? It's your boy Ampu Ra. Once again, here to talk about astral travel, my experience, talking about my journey within this journey. Uh, the last the last video I spoke about was uh, May eleventh, two thousand thirteen, which was a Saturday. And like I said, I always learn something new every time I have these experiences. And then that one was found out that I was able to walk through walls, well, fly through walls. And um, it's just an amazing experience. On this video, I want to uh, I want to talk about uh, what happened to me on June twenty eighth. 2013, which was a Friday. So I woke up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom and I drank some water. And when I returned to my bed, I checked my phone to see what time it was. It was 2.15 a.m. And I said to myself, I might have an out-of-body experience because I realized every time I break my sleeping pattern and go back to sleep, the vibration starts. And I forgot to mention this in the other experience. Um, I had a uh, set my alarm clock on purpose because I realized that's what happens every time I break my sleep pattern. So I set my alarm clock to wake me up. And so uh, it's like you got to fool your body and your mind. You know, your body stays asleep, but your mind stays awake and your conscience. So I forgot, like I said, I forgot to mention this. I did this during uh, the April 28th, 2013 experience. I set my alarm on my phone and to wake myself up and then go back to sleep to see if the vibration would happen. And sure enough, it did. I mean, but this time I didn't, uh, I didn't use my alarm. I had to use the bathroom that night because I drank a lot of water. I didn't want to do that because my, uh, <laughs> my girl got really mad at me. And I set the alarm clock to wake me up 2.15 in the morning. You know, she thinking we got to go to work like already. And I was like, nah, I mean, you know, I made a mistake with the alarm clock. Don't worry about it. Go back to sleep. So what I did was, you know, sometimes I would drink a lot of water because, you know, you're going to have to use the bathroom. So that was another way of me waking myself up without waking her up. OK, because I ain't want really want her to know what I was trying to do. OK, um, so when I went back to sleep, the vibration started and I left my body with ease. I went outside to fly. Yes, I can't get over the feeling that I can fly. Even with flying became so easy for me now, I guess I'm getting good at this. I started to fly and I remember going higher and higher. The houses on the top of the buildings all looked the same and I got lost. I didn't know where I was. I was only flying for a short time and then I went back to my body. To tell you the truth, I want to go back to that heavenly place that I went on April 21st, 2013. Now, that place, you know, like I said before, to me, that was like the fifth dimension. I was like the highest room I ever been. And it's like once I got once I went there, it's like I've been I can't like stop thinking about that place. I want to go back there so bad. And um, and I want to get good at this astral traveling and learn more about it. You know, to get to that place. So, you know, I started doing my research to figure out how to do this more often. So right now, my goal is to learn how to do this more often and to be conscious about it. Okay. I have been doing more research on actual travel and how to have more of these experiences. Because like I said before, I usually only have this like once a month. Once a month. But this experience is so amazing that I'm addicted to it, man. I want to do this like all the time. I want to do this at will. You know, there are people out there that are masters out there. I mean, they could just meditate and boom, just leave their body. I want to get to that level. You know, I can't, I don't have, I feel like I don't have no control. When it happens, it just happens. You know, and I just go with the flow. I mean, you think about it, you got those monks in Tibetan, in the Tibetan mountains, and you see them, they be looking all 
you know, bald head, you know, with these robes on, you know, looking different. And they be meditating all day. People don't realize they astral traveling. They not here. <laughs> they gone. You see, these are masters and they, they know the secrets. They not going to tell you, but they know the secrets. And I also want to, um, I know I spoke about, in the last video, I spoke about um, about religion. And I'm, I'm just going to correct myself. I don't knock religion. I don't knock religion. Some people need religion. Some people need religion. You know, sometimes, you know, religion changes people's lives. And that's a beautiful thing. I mean, it's just not for me. I mean, I don't knock it. And like to me, I just feel that religion just separates people. Oh, my God is better than your God. You know, you got like 600 different types of Christians and many different types of Muslims, many different types of, you know, Jews. And and in Hinduism, there's like over 600 gods. Like it just separates people. And that's what I don't like. You know, it just separates people just like race. You know, there's only one race, and that's the human race. And, um, but don't get me wrong, there are some truth in religion. They are. They are some truth in religion. It's just that it's hidden. It's just that it's written in codes. And these books are not meant to be taken literally. And that's the, that's the problem with people. They take these stories and these messages literally, but it's deeper. It's a very deep understanding. Is a very deep understanding. And, you know, you think about all these prophets that be having these visions and these messages. They got these messages within astral traveling. You know, when Abraham went to the mountain to meditate, when uh, Muhammad did the same thing, went to a mountain, fasted, Went to a mountain for months and just meditated. They actual travel. They got a message from the creator. You know what I'm saying? And and even in the Bible, they even have some passages, some verses that that uh talks about actual travel. I don't know them off the top, but um, I'm I'll find that for you and get you that that information on the next on the next video. But um, yeah, they, there's truth in this in this uh in religion, but you know, it's hidden. You got to like find this stuff out on your own. These preachers and rabbis, they don't be kicking that. They don't be kicking stuff about this. They don't talk about this type of subject. You know, they kind of, they trying to, they kind of give you the kindergarten, the kindergarten version of the Bible or the Quran or the Torah. They don't give you the master version. They don't give you the higher, the higher uh, message behind it, the real truth behind the, these stories. But, um, let me get back to this journal. I just want to just get that out the way. So, so I wanted to do this. You know, I did my research on this actual travel and to learn how to do, you know, do it more. So I came up with uh, some things. So first, you need to build some chi. And chi is, uh, the meaning of chi is energy. You just want to build energy. Everything is energy. All right. And um, second, You'll need to meditate. There's a, a lot of good things that come with meditation. You know, go you, you're going in within yourself. You know, you're not going outside. You're not looking for answers outside yourself. You know, you're praying outside yourself. Oh, God, please, please, God. You're looking up, looking up. Look within. You know, all the answers and questions are inside. And meditation helps with that. Meditation helps you find a real you. So meditation helps sun gazing and moon gazing. And um, a lot of people don't know about sun gazing. I've been sun gazing for about a year. And uh, this is back in 2013. I wrote this. I've been sun gazing for about a year. And uh, the sun gazes, when you look at the sun... And you imagine the energy entering your mind and your body. And you can only do this. This is very important. You can only do this 
when the sun is rising and when the sun is setting. All right. Don't look at the sun when it's the highest in the sky, because you have to understand if you know the science of the sun, the science releases uh, different rays at a certain point of time. So the most harmful rays that it releases is when it's in the highest of the sky. So you get the most potent, the good rays and the good energy from the sun when the sun is rising and when the sun is setting. Okay, so don't look at the sun when it's the highest in the sky because you would you would damage your eyes. Okay. And if you're a beginner, only look at the sun for 10 seconds. But me, because I've been doing it for a long time, I could look at the sun for a while. And you'll you'll see, you'll start getting better and better at it. But like start small. You know, start small. Look at the sun for 10, 10 seconds, you know, for this week. Because you got to build this up. Because you're not used to doing this. If you're not used to doing it, you know, you got to build it up. And then maybe go 15 seconds. Then maybe go 20. You just keep building it, building up. And then, then you know, you might be doing it for a while. You might, you know, look at the sun, you know, for minutes, maybe even hours. You got to build that up. And it's good because it, the, the sun... That y'all, they say your eyes are the windows of your soul. You know what I'm saying? So you you get in that light within your eyes, and it, you know you charge up because you are also a sun. You have a sun burning inside of you. That's what you get the word soul from. The word soul comes from the word sun. You are a burning sun. You stick a thermometer in your mouth. You you know the average. Temperatures like ninety eight point seven degrees. That's hot. <laughs> That's hot. And can you imagine when you're having a fever? It'd be over a hundred degrees. That's burn. That's hot. You know what I'm saying? You know how it feels when you go outside and there's over a hundred degrees. You're like, man, it's hot. So imagine that that type of heat is within you. So the sun kind of helps. I mean, that's what that's why that's the whole purpose of sun gazing. And it kind of like wakes up. Your third eye. Your third eye. Like I said before, certain religions know about this. Like within the Hindu, the Hindu religion or Hinduism, you know, that's why they have that red dot right here on their on their forehead. You know what I mean? That symbolizes that third eye. Because that third eye is an actual eye. Okay? It's an actual eye. And when you are being formed in a fetus. You know, it it kind of sits back as you're growing within the womb. The third eye kind of like pulls back into the middle of your brain and it sits in the middle of the brain. It's called the seat of your soul. OK. So moon gazing is also good, too, because you are still getting that light from the sun. It just bounces. It, the moon don't have no light. OK, it doesn't illuminate no light. It gets its light from the sun. And this is how we get the different phases of the, the moon. You know, you get a half moon, you get a full moon, new moon, crescent, the waxing. So, you know, that light bounces off and you still get energy from that. You still get energy from that. So sun gazing and moon gazing is very good. Third, eat healthy. Eat healthy foods. Uh, drink lots of water because it gives us energy. You know, it gives us energy. Working with crystals is also a good way to build energy with meditating with crystals. You know, I have a special friend out there. You know, I call her, I call her Hathor. Go check her out, the house of Hathor. She uh, makes crystals, necklaces and bracelets and jewelry. She's, she's nice with it. Uh, she even made this one for me. This is all crystals with the falcon. And there's a ruby red crystal right here. Also, she made this one. This is uh the Ankh. This is also the Ankh, and this is the crystal right here. This is a tourmaline crystal. It's good for uh blocking negativity, you know. Crystals have a, a vibration, you know, it comes from the earth, it comes from the planet Mother Earth. So it has a vibration. Everything around us has a vibration. Like I said, everything is energy. Um, people don't realize that the first computers use crystals. 
You know, a lot of people don't know that. It was even uh, crystals in certain watches. Okay. Um, so crystals is a very good a good thing to get into. She was the one that really put me on to crystals. You know, shout out to her. And also, um, like I told you before in the last video, Rob Hotep, he put me on to the hematite crystal for protection. You know, I definitely have uh, my hematite. So I, I, I became a... I became a crystal junkie. I became a, I just started collecting crystals. They're very beautiful, man. They're very beautiful. They're natural. They come from the earth. You know, they come in all different types of geometric shapes and, and colors. So uh, <clears throat> crystals is very good to get into. It's a lot of good healing in crystals. You know, look up healing properties of certain crystals, and you get some good information on that. And it's good to meditate with. So fourth. You need to deal with the ethers of nature, the netas, the netarus. All right. What that means, that means go outside with the, with the trees and the grass, the air, the animals, the insects, and fire. You know, the elements. You know, it's good to even when meditating with a, with a candle. Like I told you before, you are a burning sun. You know, you have fire burning within you. Uh, fifth is the most important one. Okay. This is the most important. This is the most important one. This is the most potent one for me. So uh, try to wake up around 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. Try to wake up. Try to wake yourself up in the middle of the night. Because that's the magical hour. All right. Uh, try walking around, use the bathroom, get a drink of water, and then go back to sleep. Because you got to fool your body and your mind to do this, to do this actual travel. For those out there that uh, are trying to do this, like I said, we all, we all possess this power. But um, for those out there that are not ready to see some things, don't do it. Just just keep living, just keep living your life. <laughs> keep going to sleep and not dreaming. Just do you, all right? And uh, to get back to the third eye, you know, uh, the pineal gland. Uh, there's a book out there that I had read. It's called The DMT, The Spiritual Molecule. Very good book. If you get a chance, you know, get that book. And um, DMT is like a drug. That your pineal gland naturally produces. Yes. Your brain produces a drug. And this drug is what helps you. This drug is what makes you dream at night. Okay. And this, this uh, molecule is found in nearly everything. In every living organism. And it's considered the most potent psychedelic on earth. The most potent psychedelic on earth. Okay. And your body naturally produces this. Now you can get DMT on the streets. You know, there's people out there that get DMT. There's people out there that makes it. I ain't got time to get into all that, but they smoke it. And let me tell you, they go into a different dimension like this. And boom, they be like, oh, I seen some crazy stuff. And it's crazy because these people see the same entities. That's, that's what bugs me out. They have the same experience and see the same entities sometimes. And, um, but your brain naturally produces it. And um, there's other drugs that can help you get to these realms. You know, like mushrooms, LSD, and acid. But... Man, me, I wouldn't do none of this stuff. I don't need to. But these are other ways. But I don't recommend nobody to do these type of things. I really don't. Because if you don't know what you're doing, you're going, you could probably really hurt yourself. You could probably really hurt yourself. So I don't recommend nobody doing these type of psychedelic drugs. And don't know what you're doing. And then you're going to mess up your brain. But your body... Your brain naturally produces it. You just got to know how to tap into it and, um, and have this amazing experience without these type of drugs. Okay? 
Another one is um, ayahuasca. And uh, ayahuasca is like a root. It's like a root that had grown in South America. I think it's Peru. I watched his documentary on that. That's pretty deep. And um, some people want to go through a spiritual journey. They go down there and they see a uh, shaman from Peru. And they'll, they'll, they'll take the root and other ingredients and they, they, they chop it up, mash it up, and they cook it up. It's a long process to make it. And, you know, this type of stuff is passed on through generation through generation. And let me tell you. Like the, oh, the documentary I watched, these people had amazing experiences. Amazing. You know, they were tapping into to higher realms and different dimensions and seeing entities. And, you know, people, you know, some people have a bad trip and some people have a beautiful trip. But those that have a bad trip is the fear. It's the fear. They, it's the fear of the unknown. You know, but once some people that's not scared, they they willing to accept, they willing to think outside the box. You know, they had this amazing experience. And it's crazy because there was people that were seeing the same entities again, same type of beings that were coming to them. Which was crazy. And um, you know, it's like that uh it's like that movie The Matrix, you know. These movies they give it to you, they give you good information. You know, when Neo got unplugged, his eyes was open. He saw what was what he couldn't really see that was around him the whole time. You know, so which pill are are you willing to take? The red pill or the blue pill? <laughs> All right, let me stop playing. So, you know, that was uh, that was my uh, my part of my research trying to see how to have this out of body experience. You at, you know, you at home with people that are watching this video, try these methods. It might work for you. It might not, you know. I mean, it's worked for me. Like I said, I'm reading from my personal journal. I'm giving you all my personal experience. I'm finally sharing this with the world so you could try it. You know, go within yourself and try it. All right, so I'm going to leave y'all on that note, and uh, until we meet again, this is Ampu Ra on Astro Travel. Peace.